Hey guys, welcome back. Today I'm here, I'm going to give you some tips that I use for inner child healing work. Basically, for trauma. When clients come to me and tell me how they're feeling right now, I like to explore if this is coming from their childhood or what kind of connection we can make using the psychodynamics approach. And with psychodynamic approach, it is very important that one of the tools that I use, that I, I have developed in my practice, is using the inner child healing work to bring that understanding for the client and help them. So I'm going to give you some few tips today. And you can use this on your own where you watch the video or we can use it in the session um, and then you can go and watch it in the video. You can click, come here anytime you want, click this video and see if you can have an understanding of what we talked about in the session. Now, I've put some few th things down that I would like to go through. Now, you might ask, Hensi, what is the meaning of inner child? I don't understand that, you know, that word, the inner child. Now, we all have that childlike um, aspect of us. So what your inner child is, is the childlike, the childlike aspect of you, you know, before you hit puberty, that your younger self, the younger version of yourself, that is your inner child. Um, you know, before you hit puberty, that your inner child, it, it holds your memories, it holds your childhood memories, it holds your childhood hopes and your dreams of the past and also aspirations in your future. When we were children and developing some things, some natural things like maybe natural disasters, which is nat nat natural stuff can affect how we um, develop. It could be psychological, it could be economical, it could be emotional factors. There are so many different factors that can interrupt that process. And those events can become trauma. So what I've put here is you can experience that trauma. Maybe they could be caused by some different events in your life. I've just named a few here. Probably rejection. It could be abandonment. It could be abuse. Maybe tra tragic events have happened. Um, maybe lack of emotional boundaries, uh, lack of emotional support or boundaries, lack of um, approval, affirmation, growing up, not feeling loved, people bullying you, always, you know, feeling that you're not good enough, low self-esteem, depends on how your household was really, or your environment or community. A few people, some, some people, when they come to, to therapy, they talk about the war. Maybe they've lived in a country where they've been, um, they witnessed war has gone on and that has affected them as, as children and they've grown up into adulthood and are experiencing these memories, which can be triggered by their current situation or whatever they're going through people also one of the major things i find people come into therapy to talk about also in terms of trauma is maybe they were abused as a child sexually abused as a child or could be physical abuse or it could be you know lack of emotional support from your parents that neglect which causes them to have this attachment issue now i'm just gonna um very quickly talk about how I use this tool. So first of all, when the client comes and talks about, we, we explore that. So if you're coming to the session and you're saying to me, Hensi, this is what I've experienced. Now, I can't work with every client the same way. Each client is different. And I usually say this in my videos that every client is different. So I work with a client according to what they present to me. So please, I want you to be able to notice that you know, even though I'm giving you some some of my ideas here and the tips in how I work, it doesn't mean that when you come or you go to therapy, it could be your own therapist or you could be wanting to use this video that it must work for you. Everyone is different and everyone's story is different. But when a client comes, first of all, I like using visualization. I know it's very painful, but visualization is really good because the aim of the inner child healing is for you to connect, is for your adult self 
to connect with that young self that went through that pain, that went through that trauma. So one of the things that I would like to say to clients is to identify the pain that you carry in each stage of your development. It is good for you to, you know, identify the pain that you carried, you know, through each stage of development. So for example, you might say when you were five years old, um, you felt abandoned by your parents um, because they maybe there were maybe there was domestic violence and they pushed you to the side and they were arguing in front of you. Or you can say maybe when you were six years old, um, mom would drop you off at nursery and really didn't bother to pick you up. You were the last person to be picked up because she was always working. Whatever that is, whatever your experience is, it's always good to identify the um, the aspect of your life where you feel that pain is. And I like using the timeline. I use the timeline a lot because the timeline will help you to identify different stages of your life, significant where significant events of your life happened. And I explore with the client during the session what emotions they felt, if they can remember. Um, what what are your needs that you felt weren't met? It's good to identify it. Some people just say, I have trauma. I, and that word is so used loosely when people talk about, you know, they've experienced trauma. But in the session, when we experience it, when we it, when we explore it together in the session, in the end, it's not really a trauma that they've experienced, but it's just an incident that they've experienced, which is not even tied to things from their past. Now, don't get me wrong, because trauma doesn't only apply to your childhood. It can also apply to your adulthood, which can trigger something or, you know, that you remember or something that happened to you in the past. So it's always good to also remember um, this aspect. So what I, I'll just very quickly go through them. What childhood needs do you feel that um, were unmet when you were growing up as a child? How do you respond to your inner child today? You know, what areas do you want to explore? Those are the things you want to you, you talk about in therapy. How has your past, how has your past influenced your future? How has your past influenced your future? Um, what have you carried? What have you carried from your childhood? Unresolved issues. What is it you've carried from childhood into your present day life? What is it you've carried? Some of our issues are so painful. They're so hurtful. We don't want to open that box. Sometimes we just want to close it and let it be closed. But I like to say to clients, if we don't address those issues that are so painful for us, they will show up in your life. They will show up in other ways. They will mask themselves in other ways. It could be, it could come out as anger, frustration, and they will interrupt and interfere with your other relationships. So, you know, um, I say, one of the things I say is make a list of weaknesses and strengths that you've carried from each development if each developmental stage as a child okay all right let's see what else um i have put down here in your adult self another thing is to focus on the tension in your body you know what is it that you're noticing are you noticing anything in your body as an adult sometimes when we let me just give you an example. I think if I give you an example, it will make sense. Okay. Mm, I'm just trying to see what example I can I can use for myself. Um, okay. I'll use an example. So when I experience um, social anxiety, it takes me back to, okay, why do, what, what's making me feel so anxious? When I'm, when I'm, this, uh, let me just say, let me just say this now. One of the things I don't like, I don't like, um, I don't like the sales. I do not like sales. So when there are sales, I like to go to the, um, I like to do my sales online. I like to do shopping online. I thank God for online shopping because I don't like, I don't like sales because all the, especially where all the clothes are being jam packed together and all the, 
everything was being everything is just being jam packed together and put together you know not organized anything that's not organized is re i find find it difficult when things are not organized and i think during sales if the if all the racks are put separately and all the clothes of the same the similar clothes are put in one specific rack with a sale item there i'll find that helpful somewhere like tk max and i'm not trying to um, dis discourage you from going to tk max i find it really difficult to shop in tk max because all the clothes are just jam-packed together but it's a really good shop it's a good shop they have so many lovely things but for me i just find it difficult to shop there during the sales because there's too many people all ramming all the clothes are rammed pack you know so i find it difficult but you know but but that's me but some other people might find it easy and one of the things that i've traced is that in my own childhood growing up dad never used to allow us go out we were isolated he never liked us to make friends with people because he was trying to protect us so that has affected me which i recognize as an adult that where there are too many people in a certain in a in a space I begin to get a little bit agitated. I begin to feel like, oh, well, I'm not so, I'm not meant to be here because there's so many people here. But, you know, for me to be able to understand that, I need to experience with my inner child at that age what she went through. How did she feel when dad was saying that you can't go out, you have to stay indoors? You know, maybe he was trying to protect us. I, I don't know. I can't ask him now because it's late. You know, things like that. So it's the same thing. You need to think about no matter how traumatic that is for you, what is it that is affecting you right now in your everyday life that you can link back to the ch your childhood? So we look at that in the session. We also look at what development you have made separately from that inner child because a lot of things um, happened in your childhood but also what is happening in your adulthood is your adult listening to your childhood and hearing her or is or him or is that adult is that childhood acting up and your adult self just maybe ignoring it or just accepting it so there's so many things that we can look at in the session today all right another thing that i normally say is um give time to listen to your inner child give yourself that space to listen to what is your inner child saying to you sometimes we listen to our inner child so much if the inner child says you're not good enough we as the adult we don't develop ourselves to say you know what i am good enough as an adult but maybe my inner child felt not good enough because of circumstances around that time sometimes it's good to separate yourself from that event and then focus on your inner child to understand what she went through or what he went through during that period of their life at that time because the inner child healing work is to bring you the adult together with your younger self so that both of you can begin to interact and understand each other sometimes you might find that dissociation if the um, event was so painful but the purpose of the work is to bring you two together yourself and that inner self within you together so you begin to understand and you as the adult begin to take control you know so that your younger self does not control you okay well i hope this information is enough because i don't want to give too many information if you feel that this information is something you want to learn a little more of then book a session if you feel you want to learn more about how your inner child influences some things that you're doing as an adult book a session and we can take it further from there okay have a nice day